We've been in the Galapagos Islands now for two months. And the first phase had us really celebrating what it means to create a marine protected area. And now here we find us on the west side of the Galapagos celebrating how much life is here. There's just life stacked upon life, stacked upon life, just surviving and thriving in this habitat. To get here, you can only come by boat, but it's not easy. It's this mythical, wild, rugged, remote coast. It's the most epic expedition this boat has ever done. And to have Sea Legacy One as our life support system is amazing. Big weather, big swells, big wind, big waves. But if you want to be in one of the most remote dive sites in the world, then you got to have a little risk. We're here to tell the story of animals that are unique, that are also really vulnerable. Their future may actually be on the balance because of much larger forces. Normally, it's very difficult to photograph creatures like cormorants and penguins because they're very scared of humans, but not here. These animals are still in the process of evolving and they're still learning how to be species. So I was really surprised when I floated alongside the coast and all of a sudden these cormorants came straight to me. The flightless cormorant of the Galapagos evolved to be flightless because it doesn't need to fly. There's no predators on land, so all it has to do is waddle onto the water. And once you see it on the water, it's mystifying. It's like an arrow. You just see this animal zipping to and from. They weren't trying to be comical, but they made me constantly laugh to see how it hunts underwater, looking under every rock, trying to catch a scorpion fish that's just too big for it to swallow down. It's just the coolest little bird out there. Then it goes out on land and it still dries its feathers, you know, even though it doesn't need to because it doesn't fly. So it's very funny to see these animals starting to become more and more distinct as the thousands and millions of years separate them from their cousins elsewhere. Fun. So cool. It's nice out here in the sun. One of the challenges right now that we have is Christina announced that there was just too much work to be done in New York. We are devastated to lose our most important member of the team. I hate missing out, knowing that the crew was having the most amazing diving on the planet. But, you know, conservation comes first. It was funny how the dynamic on board shifts when Christina's not here. I sort of can't stop. You guys can point and say, that's a good spot. I could go down there and just sit in the rocks and you guys could like move away. That's the difference between the two sides is this becomes more dangerous. And they'll also be like streaming past this corner. So maybe you'll be my safety diver. We work from dark to dark every day and then we do the night dives at night. We're gonna go do it, because that's how we roll. Can't wait. I think we try and get four dives in today, minimum. If we are tired, I can push beyond that. I think sometimes a group of independently competent people can be more dangerous. I was even stressed yesterday just looking for Marcel. Well, right now, Christina just got here from Canada. And when Christina comes back, everybody's very relieved to come out from under my iron thumb. I actually think when she's here and she brings that element of her style of leadership, we're more productive as a team. Can you hear that? That is the sound of no engines. <laughs> That's the best. We had a shot list coming to the west side, anywhere from pods of orcas, dolphins, and of course, at the top of that shot list were marine iguanas. It's the only species of iguana, these wild prehistoric looking animals that actually not just swims and goes in the water, but has evolved to be able to dive down, feed for a couple of hours, and then go back to the beach and get as warm as they can, as quickly as they can. And where they choose to feed is in very wild, rough conditions.
all of these areas is nesting for marine iguanas, right? Then you're gonna see that all of this area has like a rocky crumble type of topography. So yes. it's very dangerous so they get caught and flushed out here. Yes, this is a no-no. And between the corner here where you see the waves breaking, it's really rough. And if you go following the shoreline, there's gonna be a point that when you surface, we will not see you. This is not an easy ocean to go into. The coast is beaten by tremendous swells, so you have to jump in as the surge of the ocean is beating you around. And this is how marine iguanas go foraging for food. So now here you are, two to three feet of water, waves breaking over you, and they've got these great claws that they get to hang onto the rocks and the algae while they're feeding. But for us, cumbersome human creatures that get beautiful, artistic locked off video and still shots is extremely difficult. When you feel the pull of the ocean, it is terrifying. Visibility was really murky, but we put 20 hours in the water to get a few good images and some usable moments. It was worth the challenge. If I could only photograph one animal for the rest of my life, it would probably be the marine iguana. What makes them special, being endemic, also makes them incredibly vulnerable. How these animals evolved to survive here is just miraculous. Problem now is that with climate change, even the slightest change in water temperature can spell disaster for species like the cormorants, the penguins, and the marine iguanas. Making sure that the world knows about these species, I think it's a huge part of the job that we do. If people can fall in love with the charismatic iguanas, the really cool, recently evolved flightless cormorants and the adorable penguins, green sea turtles, and the big schools of fish and the fun, playful sea lions, then they're gonna fall in love with the habitat and every time they take an action, they're deciding about what type of planet they want to leave for themselves and for all species.